Good morning. What up, man? What's going on, man? How you doing? Good. How are you? Um, I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Good. I gotta figure out how to. There we go. Oh, there's Stace. Hi. <laughs> it's the whole squad. The whole squad is here. Hey, Golden. First off, it's awesome to talk to you, man. It's uh kind of crazy because we're in Minnesota, you're in California, and we can't see each other for a while. But you're missing the live performances, aren't you? That's. You have no idea how much I miss live performances. Like that was my favorite part probably of 2020, the first two months before the global pandemic when I was on the road. And now I know 2021, I just can't wait for that to come back. Yeah. I have a 60 second invasion of privacy. Will you do it? <laughs> Go crazy. Okay, cool. What celebrity do you want to make out with? Billie Eilish. <laughs> really? Nice. Yeah. What's the last thing that made you cry or tear up? Um, I was just stressed out, yo. Like, last December, I was working so crazy, you know, promoting mood and uh, doing the video for Coco and all this. And I was like, yo, I haven't had a sec to chill in, like, two months. And I just had to let some let some, some thug tears come out, you know, and just <laughs> let, it, let it out. A real man admits that. I love that. How much money or cash is in your wallet right now? Maybe like uh, 27 bucks. I'm more of like a <laughs> digital currency, like a Bitcoin type of guy. You I know? think a lot of us are. Um, the last thing you bought in a store? Uh, chapstick. I chapstick. I know you're excited at something you found at Walmart recently. Yo, this is crazy, but I only went to Walmart for the first time this year. I'd never been to Walmart before that. It's very exciting. They have a lot of candy. They got a lot of stuff. I think I bought those finger, those finger things. You were excited about those. <laughs> oh, they yeah, were like these finger yeah. pots, but he called them something else. Um, <laughs> plain or peanut? <laughs> <laughs> plain or peanut M and M's? Oh, peanut M and M's for sure. Peanut you, butter. What? Oh, peanut butter. That wasn't an option. Quiet oh. you. Um, have you been to Minneapolis or St. Paul before? Yeah, I've been to Minneapolis a couple of times for shows. Have you been ice fishing? No, never. Do you know what ice fishing is? I, I think it's where you like drill a hole in the ice and then make a little igloo and then just post <laughs> up in there and chill and drop a line in the ice hole. Okay. <laughs> and have beer, drink beer. Right, drink beer. Oh, um, that's I'm a mandatory, see. I'm guessing. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Oh, do you know Lizzo? Uh, not personally, but as a fan, yes. When you meet her, will you tell her to call me? Because I want to be her best friend. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Stacy, Minneapolis, she's ready for you. <laughs> Who's the most famous person in your contacts in your phone right now? Um, probably like Lil Nas X. He does have the biggest song ever. <laughs> Who, uh, can you show us the last picture, if it's not naughty, uh, that you took on your phone? Well, let, hold on. Let me check real quick. <laughs> <laughs> he blanks it. <laughs> He's going to ask you to do the same, Stace. Oh, it's probably yeah. a picture of cats. Uh, all right. How do, I, how do I show you, how do I show my, my picture? Oh, I don't think you can if you're on your phone. Oh, I don't know. Oh, yeah. damn it. Well, that means maybe you, I can that, my background. You can just it was tell naughty. it. You'll just tell oh, us. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I think I got something. <laughs> All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Well, it must be a nice one then if it's, if you're actually going to show us. Well, while you're doing that, tell us what commercials you did when you were a kid. I don't know if he's there. Oh no, did that just make him hang up on us? I think you did. <laughs> no, he's there, he's just, he's looking at his phone because he's using his phone for the interview, so. It's oh, got it. Can't find it, that's okay. It was definitely not the right button. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just tell us what the picture was. But it was me drinking a, a Topo Chico in, a, in my garage and I'm wearing this hat that my friend made. Nice. Okay, you... Kid, oh. one more, uh, two more questions. Tell us what commercials you did when you were a kid. I did Honda, Toyota, Lunchables, Blue Diamond Almonds, and those are the big ones. That's the big four right there. So cool. Okay, last question. Will you vouch for me on Raya? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you on my friend pads. Don't even trip. Sweet. Okay, thank you. Hutch, your turn. 
<laughs> Thanks. That was that was intense. I don't know how to follow <laughs> right? up with that. You know, you, we were talking about uh, your commercials and stuff, and your your life could have gone a different way. It could have gone to acting. It it could have gone the way it has now, but it also could have gone the way of a hedge fund manager. Which which how do you go from the music industry to finance? It's just crazy. So I mean, honestly, it's it's actually the other way around. I went from finance to the music industry because I always enjoyed music, but I didn't realize like that's a, a viable career option. Like when you're a kid in school, the teachers aren't like, yeah, and if you do this and that, then you could be a big superstar one day. They don't tell you that. No. But um, the most successful person I had met uh, was a really close family friend of ours growing up, and he was a hedge fund manager. So I was like, all right, I like hanging out at this house. I want to be able to provide this for my family and my friends when I'm older. So let me try this plan out. But when I was uh, maybe like 15, I went and I got my ears pierced and I came over to the house and he was like, Golden, I'm going to just tell you right now, you know, me personally, I have no problem with it. But when you get in this finance world, they're going to be looking for any reason to X you off the list. And earrings, that could be the reason. And I was like, man, if I can't wear earrings at work, do I even want to work there? I'm going to just become a rapper. <laughs> How did your parents come up with the name Golden? Whoa, I'm so glad you asked that question. So I was born in the year 2000, which in the Chinese Zodiac is the year of the dragon. But not only is it the year of the dragon, it's um, every five cycles of the Zodiac or every 60 years is a golden dragon year. And I just so happened to be land on one of those years for being born. So I was born in the year of the golden dragon. So my dad was like, yo, we should name him Golden. And my mom was like, no, kids are going to make fun of him. They're going to call him Goldilocks. They're going to call him Golden Showers. And my dad was like, no, <laughs> just, just think about it, you know, just think about it. And my mom was like, okay, I'll think about it. And my dad, he liked to drive by the beach after work and look at the sunset. And one of these days, uh, shortly after they had that conversation, he was driving by the beach and he looked over, over the Pacific Ocean, and he saw the most gorgeous, majestic, golden sunset that he'd ever seen. And when he went and turned on the radio, this song, The Golden Time of Day, came on. And he was like, yo, this is too many signs. And he told my mom, and she was like, all right, you know, who am I to, to turn down the universe's suggestion for a name? And they picked Golden. But your, your mom had an interesting name if, if you weren't going to go with Golden, right? Yeah, she wanted to name me Indigo, another color. It's, oh, that's cool name. So it's better than what my dad was going to pick me. He was going to pick Running Bear for me, by the way. <laughs> and he thinks he thinks he thinks we're part Indian and we're not. I did ancestry <laughs> and well, you and, look like you know, a bear, but you well, never listen, ever run. Yeah, I mean, that you can't see the bottom of me. Crowling bear, you know, a little. <laughs> there is no remix. running with me at all, man. I'm telling you at all. <laughs> Um, you know, you talk about your parents and uh, how cool they've been supporting you and your career and, and no matter what you wanted to do. Uh, but what influenced you about your parents maybe to, to go into this career? So both my parents, you know, they know what it's like to uh, chase a dream and, and be in this entertainment industry. Like they weren't a lot of people like to gas it up and say, yo, you had two model parents. And then I think people immediately assume like, oh, Cindy Crawford was his mom or something like that. Like they were models, but they weren't uh, like super, super models, but they were uh, successful enough and, and smart enough to be able to travel the world off of it. So when I was like, yo, I need to leave school for this incredible opportunity, they were like, oh, we know what it's like to, to have that type of shot and, and how fleeting it can be. So who are we to deny you from chasing your dreams? That's cool. Okay. Can you get us the deal on Coco Chanel? Yeah, <laughs> little little twenty percent off, little friends and family maybe, huh? We'll talk after. <laughs> Did they reach out to you after that song came out and go, "Hey, thanks for the shout out"? <laughs> so something interesting is we're the I, I I'm pretty sure I'm the first uh, rapper, if not artist, to ever have the Coco Chanel logo cleared in my music video because wow. we had to reach out to them before, like, "Yo, I'm making this song. You guys are in it." It's tasteful, I promise. Just let us uh, uh, interact with your world. And the reason why I think this song and that video particularly was so special is because it's it's a, a combination of worlds that's never been done before. Like the baby, who's a rapper from North Carolina, mixed with Coco Chanel, a high-end 
you know, fashion, traditional house mixed with me, who's, who's kind of a combination of both the internet and the real world and the Gen Z and just bringing that all together for a real moment. You know, you're, you're doing it right. Cause if, if I were a rapper, which I'm a 37 year old dad and that would never happen, <laughs> I'd be doing like pizza hut and Chinese buffets, you know, and, and enchiladas at the Mexican restaurant. I'd be going for that. But, uh, you know, you know, you talk about, um, uh, all the videos you've done with Coco Chanel and, and, and mood and, but Stacey and I were talking earlier and man, you, besides being good at what you do, you're hilarious. Like all your videos are just so funny and fun and they're energetic, which you don't see anymore. Um, what's, what's the philosophy behind that? Cause you mentioned social media, you're kind of an influencer, but you're also in the music business. Yeah, I'm I, I'm definitely an artist first, but social media is the 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 new mall. It's the new billboard. It's the new whatever you want to call it. So I've really taken a liking to that, especially just growing up with the nip being natural. But the the philosophy behind it is that when I was in high school, you know, the couple of years before, while I was still making music, but it wasn't big yet i'm like why is everyone making all these sad songs like i want to make music that makes me feel good and in turn is going to make other people feel good so i've always just ran with that and you know it, no one's happy go lucky 24 7 but it's 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 important to to be optimistic and focus on what you can't control and i want to make music that's going to help people when they're sad feel better not feel worse if that makes you know sense. The, the the best that makes total sense in 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 when you laugh, I was laughing all morning because I wanted to go back and see all the stuff. City of Angels is such a great video, but my f I, I can't stop laughing every time I watch it. Dropped out of college, yes. it's just the the opening scene of that is just the best. But it, it's like the start of a movie or something like that. Like a Mac and Devin goes to high school part two or something. I'm glad you like it. But you know the the, the funny thing too about about that is that you've you've taken that video. And you've made social videos based upon that with dad rules. And so it's just so unique and creative that you don't see artists doing that. I just like to have fun with this thing, man. Like I never, I'm never one to take myself too seriously or try and act too cool. Like I know that my job and, and my purpose is to inspire and entertain. So I'm going to do that to the best of my ability. And you're having so much fun doing it. I think that's why you're so good at it, you know? Yeah. When I tell people... When I stop having fun, it's over. But yeah. I'm having a lot of fun right now, and I just want to keep that keep that going and not have it feel like a job, but like my purpose, my passion. So cool. Hey, you know, speaking of uh, your your brilliant work that you've done, like, I keep going back to City of Angels because it is a cool video. People have to check it out. They haven't. But what you're almost at 30 million views on YouTube on that one, almost. Um, but when Mood came out, it kind of – puts you on a different level as far as, of course, playing it on the radio and in such a, a great, genuine, awesome song. First off, how'd you come up with that song and what was the writing process with that? Um, it, it, it's funny to call it a writing process because the song happened pretty much completely by accident. Like I was literally playing Call of Duty with Ian at his apartment and Omer picked up uh, one of Ian's guitars and just started strumming, you know, some chords. And without even realizing, I start singing, why are you always in a mood, fucking around, acting brand new? And then Omar's like, whoa, whoa, that was actually good. So I stop <laughs> the game, I go, I turn it into an actual song, and then I'm like, oh, whoa, we made a good song. And did you know that, that I mean, doing it there, you, you didn't think, wow, this is going to be huge. No, I thought it was going to be a cool song. You know, me and Ian, we've been friends for a minute, but we never collaborated. So I thought it would be something that our fans really, really liked. But to, to, I could have never predicted it being as big as it became. I, be, I bet Ian's happy about that. Oh, yeah. Everyone's <laughs> happy about it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is so fun. And you know what I love about you, too, is that you're not – you're a – you're a smiley guy <laughs> you know when i see pictures of you in videos you're not like oh, i'm tough guy i'm a rapper i'm really tough and i love that about you because you're just a natural like being normal not putting on a persona you're just like you know i'm golden i'm golden i'm a lover not a fighter <laughs> love it you know one of my i keep going back to my favorite stuff sorry if i keep telling you how Thanks. much i love you uh but your collaboration with chelsea 
um, was, was pretty unique and different. It, how did that come about? And, and who do you want to collaborate with going forward? Um, so my boy KBZ, you know, he produced that song. He was like, yo, I got this dope hug, this dope artist, you know, let me know if you want to get on it. And that hook, it was just something about the, the melody of it that, that drew me in. So that was fun to do. And I think that was a, a great verse that I dropped. But as far as future collaborations, like pretty much just, it, there's so many, like everyone from Billie Eilish, as we said before, to artists like Drake, but then also more kind of alternative leaning, like Tame Impala, and then, you know, all the rock star stuff with, with MGK. Like my, my personal tastes are all over the place. So I want my collaborations to be unexpected always. So we wouldn't be surprised if we'd see you doing, you know, something on the countryside, you know, and, and, me and Kane Brown can make a smash. <laughs> I do like that your music isn't really, I, I couldn't really categorize it. I wouldn't say that you're exclusively rap. I would be like, it's kind of poppy rap. And I don't know. It's just, uh, I, you're sort of unique that way. I think you could fit in all kinds of genres, which is very cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think it's, it's natural for people to see me as a rapper because I am, but I, I think that, you know, when, when I make music, I'm not thinking, I just want to make hip hop music, or I just want to make rock music, or I just want to make pop music. When I'm making music, I think, I just want to make good music, and whatever comes out that people enjoy is for the people to decide where they want to put it. Which How hard is they that for, for you to do what you want to do? You know, we always hear these stories, you look at Taylor Swift and her label, you look at a lot of artists and their label. How hard is it with your label to do what you want to do? It seems like you're doing what you want to do and they give you kind of free range. You know, in the beginning, it was definitely a, a little bit more of a cooperation on the creative side, but I, I had to prove myself over and over again to the label like, yo, I know what my fans want. I know what the people want. So after doing that a couple of times, they're like, all right, it seems like you know what they want, so just go crazy. <laughs> and luckily, you know, I have a really great team of producers and management, like Omer Fetty, for example, that helps me pick out songs and, and figure out, you know, what, what the, the people need to hear. I think we're running out of time, Stacey. You got anything I else? I keep looking at the clock like, uh oh I know. I, I want to talk to you a lot longer. So, listen, you're going to have to come into our studio when you come to Minneapolis again, man. We, we'd love I'm to there. have you Cool. That'd be great. Real quick, real quick, anything coming up in the pipeline that uh, yeah. you want us to know about? Yeah, so just dropped Coco, like we talked about with the baby, but I got a new single coming out very, very soon called 321, and I think it's going to be something that nobody ever expected and, and sound different than any song that you've ever heard. So that's coming out. El Dorado, my debut album is coming out, and just more, more good vibes all 2021. That I can promise yeah. you. Yeah. I can't wait for that, that uh, collaboration with Billie Eilish. That's going to be good. Me yeah. too. Yeah, Me they too. can make out after you put, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so nice. Hey, thanks, man. You have a good 2021. Hopefully, we'll see you this year sometime. Yeah, I hope so. Have a good one, guys. Peace. All right, man. Bye. See you. Bye. See ya.